Yeah, I see this title, man. Let's get to it. In a game seven, Kobe is not even in the Kobe, frame. Man. And this wasn't the only time in that game. One night in 2006, Kobe decided he wasn't going to score in a game seven to prove a point. And it was nah, I ain't gonna lie. Kobe Bryant is one of the game's greatest. Yeah, we gotta see the story, but why? What's up, Kobe? These goals, gang. I ain't gonna lie. He has made over the glass. What the fuck is up? And this is the most get shots him ever. He told Shaq, Come back in. Hey, dude, you gotta throw me the ball. I said, man, f that. Get it off the rebound if I miss, bro. <laughs> Heck, he even took this. He embarrass you as much. Kobe, he had. Bruh. So, how do we get to a game where he doesn't want to shoot? I'm gonna outline what exactly went down, the three steps to Kobe's plan, and how it changed the entire NBA. Starting with what was on the line. What is up, dudes, that's ballers, players? It's your boy MJ. You see, Kobe was getting called a number two, a guy who couldn't win without the most dominant player in NBA history, Shaq. Sure, Kobe was a star. He was a three-time champion, averaged 30 points in the playoffs during a time where teams would score 80 points in the game. That's so low. But since Shaq left the Lakers, they had done nothing. In the prime of Kobe's career, the Lakers missed the playoffs in 2005. The first time in a decade. And well, the perception wasn't so great. Allen Iverson said, there ain't no number 34 around here no more. Damn, that's gotta mm -hmm. hurt. In Kobe's own words, You can't win without Shaq. Okay. I had no response, right? So I had to just bite my time until... But I remember that fan, he was in Sacramento. I said, right behind the scores table. He would respond to that same fan in his own way and in time. But Kobe was responding to the critics by scoring the most the NBA had seen in a long time. If I showed you this roster with Smush Parker and Kwame Brown starting, do you think they would make the playoffs? Boy, ain't no way, boy. No, I wouldn't either. But here is step number one, proving he could carry the Lakers by himself. But you had Kobe, who promised the Lakers would make the playoffs in 2006. Because I didn't make the playoffs. What will happen next year? I'm going to do all the work that I can do to make sure that that doesn't happen. And came in averaging 35.6 points a game, including a legendary 81 points in the game. This would be 18 for 20 from the line and an 81 point game. And maybe you have a chance. Nothing could stop Kobe hell-bent on dragging this team to the playoffs, and he did it. The Lakers were the number seven seed set to face the number two seed Suns in the playoffs, and the media seemed to be back on Kobe's side. Anybody with sense should know Kobe's the man right now. It doesn't make sense that during Kobe's best scoring season, he would all of a sudden not take a shot in a game in the playoffs. Especially since even though the Suns were the heavy favorites in the series, Kobe and the Lakers would go up 2-1. And in game four, Kobe hits the game-tying shot. Right, then the game-winning shot. For the win. <laughs> the Lakers are up 3-1. Back to back. Beat From the verge of a big upset, shots. Kobe finally showing he wasn't just a number two option. But how was a number seven seed Lakers being the number two seed Sun? That Suns team had a two-time MVP, Steve Nash, leading a historic offense. And up until that point, the series had been very physical. Kobe dunked in Steve Nash's face in game two but hadn't really had insane scoring outbursts, which was weird because during the regular season, Kobe had averaged 42.5 points against the Suns. But the Lakers went one and three, so Phil Jackson said, our game plan was to have Kobe draw double teams, then feed Kwame and Lamar down low. Wow, they really thought to feature Kwame Brown in a playoff series, and it worked <coughs> for the first four games. Kobe was only averaging 23 points, still shooting quite a bit, but moving the ball around more. Kwame went from averaging 5.4 field goal attempts in the regular season to 9.3 in the playoffs. But here's where it all went wrong. The Suns caught on and by game 5 decided to double Kobe less and less and leave it to Roger Bell who couldn't guard Kobe and clotheslined him. The Suns were frustrated, no doubt, but they won game five and kept the same strategy into game six. But here's where it all took a big turn. Kobe was hitting shot after shot after shot. 
lost track of how many mid ranges he was shooting over the Suns defenders just to keep the Lakers in the game. And then this clutch three and a layup to put the Lakers up by three with 30 seconds left. But the Suns, with their last chance, hit a three to go to OT. And despite 50 points from Kobe shooting 57% from the field, 63% from three, the Lakers lose. The series is tied 3-3. And the media went in, but not on the Lakers, on Kobe Bryant for being a ball hawk. Despite the fact that the Lakers were one rebound away from closing the entire series and from talking about how clutch Kobe was, he was now the reason the Lakers lost. And this wasn't the first time. Throughout the season, you could find articles questioning whether Kobe was selfish, but there were doubts whether Kobe had helped his team throughout the season like there were after game 6. With all this in mind, on May 6, 2006, game 7 started, a night that would shock the entire world. It was the start of step number 2, forcing the Lakers to change. The Suns get off to a good start and Kobe is just making impossible shots, fade away, threes, you name it. The Suns crowd starts chanting, Kobe sucks. He just takes it in. He dropped 23 points in the first half, but the Lakers were down 15. Okay, so it's time for Kobe to turn up even more, right? Well, Kobe comes out passing into the post and backing up and then passing and running away. Huh? Where is Kobe on the screen? Heck, he's watching Smush Parker try to hit a fadeaway. This is the same guy that is yelling at his teammates to foul and runs like a madman to do it himself. This can't be the same guy that jo Everybody probably got to him, you know what I'm saying? All that, all, you know what I'm saying? All the media, all the, all the articles. Let's drop got 50 to him. Like, points. I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all. This is the best chance we got, you know? That's what he tried to show y'all, like. Before, Phil Jackson wanted to change the game plan in the second half of Game 7, from Kobe Ball to running things through other guys. The idea was to get everyone else involved, to have them be more in it defensively, and hopefully string a few more defensive stops. The way the Lakers offense was set up didn't mean Kobe would get an assist. It was designed to swing the ball to the open man once Kobe got doubled. Kobe just had to make a read on who would have the next quickest pass to the open man. It got everyone touching the ball. But this, no, this looks intentionally low effort. Kobe would only end up taking three shots in the second half. And watch as the Suns won game seven in the series. He ended the game with 24 points and everyone started to roast Kobe. I think he stopped shooting because he wanted to say those guys didn't help me. Because normally if they had to get down by 20 points, he would try to take over. He was not aggressive at all. He was not shooting the ball. It was getting called the night. Hey, you ever seen a wealthy person oh or a wealthy God, family man. or a jet owner? Like, I got a jet, I'm sorry, you know? Kobe quit on the Lakers. The outlash was so bad that Kobe went on uh, Yeah, I, I already know that's going to be bad because it looks bad. It definitely looks bad. Like, I don't even like that. Even though he's trying to prove, I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? It's a game seven, Kobe. I understand you're trying to prove a point. It's not the time. You know? RP Kobe, but I, I don't feel like that was the right time. You know, television and explained his actions. Game four in the fourth quarter, quarter, quarter was a double digit oh, deficit, like 12, 13, 14 old. point game. You know, we stuck to the script because we knew in order to beat the Phoenix Suns, we have to stop them. And in order for us to stop them, everybody has to feel you're more involved. And when you play better offensively, when you hit down one, two jumpers, all of a sudden your energy picks up. And behind the scenes, he cursed out Charles Barkley for three hours. Three hours. Well, his texts were like cursing me out. I'm like, yo, man, I explained to you why I said what I said. But even with that sort of justification, what everyone had just witnessed couldn't only be explained by a game plan to pass from Phil Jackson. There's no aggression, no black mom. But what if I told you that this could all be part of a master plan set by Kobe to get him to the finals? Kobe changed his number from 8 to 24 in the offseason saying he wanted to move on to something different. It was clear to the Lakers front office that Kobe was unhappy with this team. And by the end of the next season on May 30, 2007, Kobe requested a trade. Yeah, I like the trade. Yeah, it's tough to do this to the Lakers. It's tough to do this to, to come to that conclusion. It probably should be one thing in terms of, you know, wanting to rebuild right now and, uh, you know, telling 
Phil Jackson another thing. It wasn't a bluff. Kobe was tired of an aimless rebuild with no hope and was looking at homes in Chicago during the offseason. What made the threat more real was the possibility that Kobe's Game 7 performance was his indicator to prove a point that this team is horrible. That the Lakers franchise could not just rely on Kobe to keep them relevant. Kobe reported to training camp but sat out practices in October of 2007. It was all becoming real and the Lakers were scrambling. Kobe's plan was working, and here was the final step, winning. In February of 2008 though, they would make a trade that would change the future of the NBA. The Lakers acquired Pau Gasol to pair with Kobe and immediately made the finals, but they would lose. There was more work to be done. Kobe's plan needed one last piece, a better version of himself as a leader. And if you like Kobe stories, I like making Kobe videos and working hard, so subscribe for more. Kobe worked hard to become a better leader, to get his teammates in the right mindset, got Pau Gasol to be tougher, and despite any quitter allegations, Kobe continued to put his legacy on the line and thrive. Winning his first chip without Shaq, Game 7 of the NBA Finals against Boston, doing whatever it took to win, and perhaps the most important, his ability to inspire a never quit attitude in chasing your dreams, your goals, to work for what you want, and not care of what anyone else has to say in your pursuit of greatness. Which is why most people forget about the night that Kobe didn't shoot. Miss you Kobe. The only notification round shout goes to Big Wiggy. Thanks for the only support. And That's under this you one see why RP Kobe man. Or if y'all enjoyed, you know what to do. Tell me what you want me to react to next. Click on the last reaction over here. Share the video with your peoples on your social media platforms. No more idea, man.